Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Depression to Expression podcast. Expression takes all types of forms depending on how we feel and our moods and thoughts and, geez, how we slept the day before, a million factors, who we interacted with, what went on today, last night, last week. Maybe I'd like to start it a little softer, a little slower, take you through a little journey in this episode. So if you're looking for a quick fix, that's what TikTok's for, that's what quick YouTube clips are for, Instagram, if you want some quick inspiration and 30-second clips, you know, I, I'm i practicing patience in my life right now. You know, maybe that's part of the problem. That's part of the challenge of living today, is we're always looking for distraction, but we're always looking for the quick fix. We're always looking for the magic bullet. And once we find it, because we're always on the search and we're always on the go, we're constantly looking, how can I solve this negative thinking thing? How can I solve this intrusive thought thing? How can I solve this depression thing? How can I solve this anxiety thing? If I just watch one more video, if I just watch one more inspirational clip, I just want that 30 second clip, I just want that magic supplement. And you're looking. And you're looking and you're searching and you're searching one thing to the next to the next. Do you think people's impatience sometimes holds them back? Do you think maybe just the reality of people not being able to sit and listen today is any indication of rising anxiety rates? Do you think anxiety is causing people not to be able to sit for long periods of time? Or the inability to sit for long periods of time and listen and become aware is causing anxiety. I'm not just challenging you to listen to this slower podcast. Go listen to something else. Sit and listen to a long classical song, some kind of classical music. Sit in silence. Do nothing for 10 minutes. That's a bigger challenge than doing a 10-minute workout sometimes. Having a 10-minute conversation. Going for a 10-minute walk. 10 minutes, do nothing. You might be intimidated by your imagination. Let's start there. Let's start there. You know what pure imagination is, don't you? You've watched Willy Wonka just like me. No, the original. Come with me and you'll be... Oh, come on, let's sing it together. In a world of pure imagination. Yeah, you sang it with me. I know you did. <laughs> hmm. But what happened? We used to have such pure imaginations. We used to be in awe of the world. We used to be excited for our futures. We used to not think about our pasts as children. Just the thought of what you could get for Christmas was so exciting. Just the thought of recess while you were sitting down at your desk, it got you through the boring lessons because you just could imagine what you were going to do with other people. Snowball fights, playing basketball, we'll play tag. And you let your mind float and wander with no direction, no purpose. But you weren't intimidated by the thoughts. They just came. We didn't overanalyze our minds. We didn't know how to. They were still developing. But now we're intimidated. Now it's like we're fighting ourselves. We want our minds to be silent and our minds are part of us. The thoughts that come in, we can't control them. When we feel like we can't control something, we feel intimidated. We feel scared. There's a lot of fear there. I'm not preaching because I've solved the negative thinking thing. Sure, I have my tricks that I'll, I'll share with you in a bit, but I'm working through this, everyone. I'm telling you, if you hear someone on a podcast or maybe you're seeing a therapist or a coach and they say, yeah, I got it all figured out, give them the finger and, and shut the call off because that's a, that's a snake oil salesman. We're all going through this together. We're all figuring out our brains. What do we do with these things hanging off our necks? What do we do with this thing? Because sometimes it seems like it's working against us rather than for us, doesn't it? 
You feel me? Sometimes you're just up against it all the time. Now, of course, it likes to do things automatically for us. Thank you very much, brain, for sending signals to my heart to bump or to bump. Yes, my heart bumps to beat. Thanks for keeping those lungs inflated. Subconsciously, I can just breathe. That's a very good thing. That's pretty useful. Thank you for allowing me to think. But why are you thinking so much, brain? Why are you going through so much every single day? Why are you ruminating? Why are you going over the same thing over and over again? What are you looking for? There's nothing there. Why are you going through the same thing that happened five years ago over and over and over? We've been through it. There's nothing there. What are you looking for? I love podcasts because I just discovered maybe a new trick just by spitting words. What are you looking for? If you're ruminating, you know, there's all types of things you can do with the body. Different breathing techniques and stretches and things like that to ground you. That's what I talk about in the Conquer Anxiety course. If you're interested, just go to ConquerAnxietyCourse.com, okay? No pressure. There's no ads on the podcast, so I got to squeeze a few things in so I can make a dollar. What are you looking for? Ask yourself that when you ruminate, when you're thinking about the past, right? That's what I'm going to do. If we, when we begin to go back there and create that cyclical process and thinking in our mind, say, hey, Scott, what are you looking for? What, what haven't you noticed before that you're noticing now? You know, as we rework these memories, we're just adding things to it. And most of what we think about from years before, they've studied this. It's like you have about a 50% capacity to what you remember now. What you remember back then, maybe painful memories, trauma, bullying, getting fired, getting embarrassed, someone caught you with your pants down. You know, it's, it's 50% correct. We've made a lot up. It's not accurate. So what are you looking for? Ask yourself that question. All right, that's tip number like one of 10 in this podcast. All right, ask yourself, what are you looking for? And write that down on a pad and pen. Because usually you're going to respond what? What are you going to respond with? It's cool. You can have conversations with yourself. Being alone, alone isn't so bad when you're, when you're on your team. What are you looking for, Scott? Uh, I don't know. Nothing. I've thought about this before. All right, well, let's move on then. Next thought. Cool. That's it. Simple. That's tip number one. All right. Now let's talk about specifically thinking coming into the mind. All right. So we're all on the same level. I've told you that before. I'm no better than you. I'm no worse, man. So I've been very scared, very fearful of thoughts at times. Have you? They can come in quick. Existential thoughts. Thoughts that are just so in your face. So real. So vivid. But it's not that you're in your imagination anymore. We'll get back to that. But it's about it manifests in the body again. And it, it's changed your reality. So it doesn't stay in the imagination. It seems to change who we are in that particular moment and then we get to thinking well I thought I knew who I was and I'm having this thought and since I've changed who the hell am I okay first thing when you're having this type of negative thought and remember I'm working on all this too with you we're in this together when you're having this kind of negative thought intrusive thought intense thought the last thing we should do is suppress it and try to run away. As Alan Watts says, if you're trying to get rid of negative thinking, it's like trying to iron water. It's like trying to flatten water with an iron. You think that's going to work? Of course not. You're just going to stir it up. You're going to muddy it up and you're just going to make more waves. So what do you do with that? 
The whole point of mindfulness and meditation and what I teach in the course is to move yourself away from the identification of thought. Remember that cool line, you are not your thoughts, you are what you do? Damn, this podcast is full of goody, 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 goodies. All right, you are not your thoughts, you are what you do. So how do you respond, not react, but how do you respond to a negative thought coming in? And we're saying negative thought for simplicity, folks. You know, just using labels like that. I know thoughts can be fucking horrifying. You want to keep it real? Let's keep it real. But the thought isn't you. So one thing, so there's a few steps here. The one for rumination, what are you looking for? Two is we don't want to suppress it. It's like you're going to muddy up the waters. So you want to notice the thoughts come in. See it as an observer. Pretend, I don't know what video games you play. I remember this game, Tower Defense. You know, pretend you're in just a watchtower and your thoughts are maybe running below. Picture it like that. It's running below and then a next thought will come and it's running below and you're just watching them. They're not harmful thoughts. They're not with guns and bow and arrows. You don't need to do anything. Watch them come in and watch them leave. All right, and this can be done with breathing techniques. There's lots of things on my YouTube channel and meditations. But I want to invite you to try something too. When the existential comes in or, or difficult thoughts to deal with and you're like, who the hell am I? Because these thoughts are new. Ground yourself in value. No matter what thought you have, no matter what comes into your mind, it doesn't change who you are. But Scott, who am I? Well, let me tell you who I am. If a thought comes into my mind of, man, I want to punch this dude in the face. I want to punch this dude in the face. He cut me off. He's driving slow. I want to pull over. I want to open his door and I want to smack him in the mouth. All right. And then I have this cool scenario in my mind of just beating the shit out of someone. Right. <laughs> Welcome to my mind sometimes. Okay. There's anger. I got a punching bag here. So you have these thoughts of like, of maybe you hurting someone, maybe you getting embarrassed, maybe you're not feeling confident in certain situations. Okay, but would I actually do that to someone? Would I actually harm someone? No, that's not who I am. So when these thoughts come in, ask yourself, what do I value? So I ask myself, what do I value? Well, I value honesty. I value kindness. I value integrity. I value love and nonviolence. And I have these five things in my mind. So I replace those, those thoughts with thinking about my values and say, well, even if I have that thought again, and even if it stays a bit, I know that's not who I am because I'm someone of integrity and value and honesty. Does that make sense? Because we get swept away with thinking. We're like a leaf on the ground that gets swept away with a strong wind and we lose our footing. And sometimes we can't control the wind, but eventually we'll come back down softly. Think about a leaf just coming down softly, softly to the ground. We ground ourselves. That ground is our values. That's what we stand on. So who are you as a person? What do you value in your life over everything else? That's why it's so easy for me to talk about mental health, anxiety, depression, suicide, because I value honesty. I value human emotion. I value connection. I value vulnerability. I value struggle. I value self-improvement, getting to know myself and others more than anything. That's why I can do what I do. And that's why you can too. Okay, so let's review these things. And I just want to go over the suppression part too. Okay, and I'm, I'll give you a little uh, three-word tip at the end. All right, so what am I looking for when it's rumination? All right, and then suppression. Let's go over this a little bit. All right, when you compress and suppress 
and push down a spring. Think about a spring and you're just pushing it down with more force and more force and really pushing and really pushing. Eventually, that's going to boom, pop back and hit you in the face. Like I'm talking right in the face. It's going to hurt. It's going to come back 10 times as strong as if you just maybe left the spring alone. If you just looked at it, why would you have to fuck around with it? It's just a spring. It was mine. It's own business. And that's the same with thoughts. Sometimes we don't have to mess around with them and take them so seriously. That's a big point. Sometimes I take myself too seriously. Sometimes you might take yourself so seriously and we take ourselves seriously. We take our thoughts too seriously. Oh, man. They come and they go just like your moods came and went. All right, let me let me hit you up with another example. You've held in farts before. I know you have. If there's a human being listening to this, we've all had to do it. It's not pleasant. I've had to do that at work so many times. And you know, you know that sometimes there's days where you can't. You just can't. So hopefully at work or at home, you got a soft chair that can absorb the smell, absorb the vibration and sound so no one sees it. No one smells it either. It's got to be absorbed. Sit on a towel if you have to. But we know what happens when we hold in these things. If you hold it in long enough, woo! Man, that causes some serious discomfort. And then that's all we can think about. When you're trying to work, you're trying to send an email, it's like, geez, when can I fart? When am I allowed to let this baby go? So you keep typing. You keep doing your work. You still can't. People are walking by. There's no safe space. You cause some harm. And then the gas mixes with everything and your colon. And the next thing you know, when you try to fart, you shart and you shit yourself. We know what's happened to many. We know what's happened. So that one fart that you held in turned into you shitting yourself. <laughs> And that is what happens when you hold and suppress a thought. And when you try to run away, you try to distract yourself. Now, seriously, there are times for distraction. There are times when you're holding it in. There are times. You don't want to face the thought right now. Cool. Watch some Netflix. Watch The Office for the eighth time. I get it. Play some video games. Go for a walk. Call a friend. Listen to music. Listen to a podcast. I get it. But if you can just notice it for a little bit, just a little bit, just notice it real quick. Say, all right, I see you. You're there. Cool. If you can stay there for a bit, all right, whatever. But I'm going to go on with my day. I'm going to continue. But I notice the thought. You're not running away from it. You're not shaking your head being like, what the hell is that? Go away. Go away. I don't want to think about you. I don't care. I don't, I don't want to think this way. Why am I thinking this way? It shouldn't be this way. It could have been different. It should have been different. Fighting reality against the thought. The thought in itself is what's happening in the moment. You're having a weird ass negative intrusive thought. Let it come. Let it blossom if it needs to. And then let it fade away in the sunset. That's what thoughts do. Let a thought do what a thought does. How about that for a little thing? Something to tell yourself. Hey, thought, I'm going to let you do what you do. I know you come and eventually you go. So I'll let you do what you do. How about that one? And the other thing you can say when these thoughts come into yourself, I've shared this on a YouTube video a long time ago and I use it all the time. You ask yourself, is this useful? When a negative thought comes in, when a thought really that's putting you down, let's say, like I'm a screw up, why'd I do that? Nobody likes me. Ask yourself those three words. Is this useful? Is that way of thinking really useful? Is that serving me in the best way possible? Is that making me a better person? Is that in accordance to my values? Me putting myself down? Me hating myself? Me thinking I'm not as good as others? Is this useful? 
So there you have it, my friends. A whole bunch of tools for you, things to think about. Remember, thoughts, they're just like waves. They come and go. They fade and sink into the sand when they hit the shore, when they hit your mind. Let it sink into the sand and then they'll go back into the ocean. They'll go back into the world. They'll spread like memes, as Richard Dawkins says. So, listen. Don't try to rough it up with an iron. You're doing a great job. Trust me. Thoughts are weird. This kind of stuff is weird. And people seem to think that it's there's just quick fix after quick fix. And you take this supplement and you get to exercise and if you have a great family and great social network and a great job then negative thoughts won't occur bullshit someone's listening to this podcast right now has more money in the world that they know what to do with and they're still struggling with negative thinking i got a word i got a message for you first of all i'd love some of your money but second of all that's okay it's all right that you're having these thoughts because that's what reality intended that's what nature demands. That's We're letting thoughts do what thoughts do. Thanks so much for listening. If you're interested, please go to depressiontoexpression.com. All my information's there. If you ever want to get in touch, uh, if you ever want to join the Conquer Anxiety program, that's over eight hours of video, 40 lessons. You get to keep everything forever. Audio meditations, my voice guiding you through these types of scenarios. If you're interested, just go to conqueranxietycourse.com and uh, you'll be on the list and get some emails from me right into your inbox. Don't forget to check your spam and stuff. But uh, thanks a lot for listening. I had fun with this one. This was good. And I'm practicing my patience and awareness and I'm practicing the, uh, the art of doing nothing and not moving towards distraction so i'm practicing all that with you because we got time we got time stay strong keep being you don't forget to express yourself bye bye